Hello everyone. Today we are doing a video on the finances of obesity and binge eating. We have some interesting stories today, so let's begin. In the first story, this person is now 22 years old and they lost 60 pounds after recovering from a binge purge disorder. Have you noticed a change in food spending since recovery? Oh yes, nothing will zap your finances like binge eating will. I found myself broke so many times, struggling to hold out till the next paycheck because I was too ashamed to look at how much I was spending on food this email. Did you have any go-to foods that you spent an excessive amount of money on? I would order through Uber Eats a lot, so it was extra expensive. It didn't really matter whether it was from a fast food place or a restaurant. Those delivery fees are brutal. Grocery store binge food shopping was also expensive. I could demolish an entire box of cereal in one sitting. Whole bags of chips, whole containers of cookies, whole pints of ice cream. It kept adding up and adding up and adding up. Have you noticed a change in spending on healthcare costs since recovery? I had a binge eating slash general ED incident that wound up with me in the emergency room and a huge ambulance bill. Other than that, no. Have you noticed a change in spending on exercise or other discretionary health costs? Any spending on exercise was unrelated to ED costs. Have you noticed a change in spending in other aspects like clothing, hygiene, and travel since recovery? Suppressing the urge to binge sometimes results in different compulsive behavior. For me, it usually manifests as online shopping and usually overspending, especially on clothes. Did you or anyone around you ever experience financial strain due to your size or disorder? Not the people around me, but I definitely felt the financial strain often. I already wasn't making that much at my current job and binge eating slash purging was sucking up pretty much any money that wasn't going towards rent, utilities, and commuting costs. At my highest weight, I was in the obese category of the BMI, but I never became morbidly obese, so my size didn't have any impact on anyone except myself. But here's a bit of context for everything. I had obese parents growing up who overfed me and my siblings until we were all chubby. My parents, as well as teachers and other adults in my life, would constantly ridicule me for my weight, all while not offering any guidance on how to safely and sustainably lose weight. My mom had my siblings and I go on a few fad diets with her, which only gave us worse relationships with food. The shaming led to overeating in secret, then trying to make up for it by not eating, only to overeat again, etc, etc. I didn't know what binge eating was until I started a binge purge cycle, but looking back, I can definitely say this has been an issue since childhood. This next person started out at nearly 400 pounds and has been steadily losing weight and recovering from their binge eating problem. Have you noticed a change in food spending since losing weight? I have noticed a significant change in my spending on food. Prior to my recovery from binge eating and my weight loss, it was fairly common for me to spend upwards of $20 or more on fast food or prepackaged meals in one sitting, and that added up quickly. When I look back at the amount of money that I was spending each week on personal meals and food to binge on, it would easily cost close to $200 per week. This was in addition to the groceries that I purchased each week with the food that I intended to make meals at home with. That food would ultimately go to waste and had to be thrown out due to my binge eating episodes. All in all, the money I was spending on food for myself each week was nearly $300, not considering any of the food that was being purchased for the rest of my family. So $300 per week is around $1,300 per month. Currently, my family and I spend less than $100 per week on groceries for three people, only purchasing healthy and nutritious foods that we prepare ourselves at home. I don't eat any prepared meals or spend any money on food that I get from a drive through Did you have any go-to foods that you spent an excessive amount of money on? My biggest go-to foods were certain fast food chains. I had specific orders that I would keep in my phone for each chain to make it go more quickly while I went through the drive through For example, my Taco Bell order was three bean burritos, three chicken cantina power burritos, a nachos bel grande, an extra extra large grilled stuffed burrito with chicken, two orders of cinnamon twists, and a large Pepsi. This would cost around $15 each visit to the restaurant, and at one point, I was having this binge meal at least three times per week. I would take this meal home and eat it alone in my room in one sitting. 
I felt real remorse and grief when Taco Bell discontinued several of those items. Then I felt the need to find an alternative to the binge meal that would give me the same sense of euphoria and satisfaction. During each change in my binge meal go-to, it would be a very similar amount of money where I would spend close to $15 to $20 at very cheap places, so it was both a lot of food and a lot of money. So it ended up being a lot of food and a lot of money. Have you noticed a change in spending on medical care since losing weight? I feel very fortunate that I have not had to spend a lot of money on medical care. I have never had abnormal lab values or vitals when I go to my primary care appointments. However, I am the exception to the rule rather than the norm. I've always been on the more active side, even at nearly 400 pounds, and I feel that has been beneficial to my overall health but I am by no means healthy despite my recovery and weight loss because I'm still over 100 pounds overweight. To start out, I had nearly 250 pounds to lose in order to be in a healthy weight range for my height and build. Due to these factors, my healthcare spending is around the same as someone who is at a healthy weight for my age, but like I said before, I am the exception to the rule rather than the norm. Have you noticed a change in spending on exercise and other discretionary health costs? I have noted an increase in spending on things related to healthy living and behaviors. I currently have a gym membership that I truly do enjoy using. When looking at the grand scheme of my spending habits, it makes more logical sense to spend $25 per month on a gym membership that makes me feel better physically and mentally than $20 per day on copious amounts of food that ultimately lead to a cycle of guilt and shame that is incredibly hard to get out of. I also spend more time and money on exercise equipment now, but it's been offset by the fact that it's been significantly more cost-effective than my binge-eating episodes. So while I have noticed an increase in spending on things related to healthy living, it has been significantly cheaper than continuing to engage in binge-eating. Have you noticed a change in spending in other aspects like clothing, hygiene, and travel? I have noticed a change in spending in other aspects of my life. Due to the fact that I am still losing weight and have lost a significant amount of weight already, it has been necessary for me to purchase new clothes due to my professional life and for comfort. I've noticed that it's easier and more cost-effective to be at the size that I am now compared to the size that I was when I was larger because I'm able to purchase clothing off the rack rather than spend large amounts of money and order something online, ultimately paying additional shipping costs. It's also important to note that some of the clothes that I purchase now are cheaper as well. I haven't noticed a difference in terms of hygiene as it's not changed much over the course of my weight loss, but the most significant change in spending has been my travel expenses. I am very tall, but I was also so large at one point that it required me to purchase more than one plane seat when I flew to different places. This was incredibly expensive, and at one point during an international trip that I took, it cost me an extra $2,000 for an extra seat. I've gotten to a size where I no longer have to purchase an extra seat, and I also don't have to ask for a seatbelt extender, which some airlines do charge for. So travel has become much more comfortable and less expensive than before. One cost that I don't see discussed often is tires on obese individuals' cars. Over the time that I was super morbidly obese, my front driver's side tire on my car would wear much more easily and needed to be replaced or rotated more often than the other three. I found it interesting to see the effects of my weight even on the wear and tear of my vehicle. Additionally, the pressure in that tire would be consistently lower on that side compared to the other tires. Since losing weight, my tires wear more evenly and as expected, and the pressure remains more consistently balanced. Did you or anyone around you ever experience financial strain due to your size or disorder? I've always been very cognizant of my behaviors and spending, so I did everything I could not to impact the people around me. However, there were times I was financially strained due to getting too many binge meals in one week, or I would use credit cards or savings in order to satisfy the craving to binge. I'm really grateful that I haven't had excessive healthcare costs since that can really impact stress levels that can then impact medical conditions that come up because of excessive weight and poor food choices. The biggest impact that my weight and binge eating had on me was the mental and emotional strain that I had to deal with on a daily basis. Binge eating is like a catch-22, because oftentimes you are binge eating to make yourself feel better 
and to have a moment of relief from stress and the cocktail of negative emotions you're feeling. However, once the binge is over, those emotions come flooding back, along with all the guilt and shame for binging once again. It was a miserable cycle to be in, and I would not wish it on my worst enemy. At one point, I delved into the fat acceptance and body positivity movement to try to see if there's any way I could find love and acceptance within myself to stop all the negative feelings. But at one point, I realized that it only made the cycle more frequent and gave it more strength. It wasn't until I started treating my body with love and respect and giving it the food and exercise it needed that I started feeling better. I've been lucky to not have experienced the physical side effects of binge eating and obesity, but the mental and emotional aspects are something that I continue to manage on a daily basis with my therapist and primary care physician. In this next story, this person has lost 90 pounds and is currently recovering from a binge eating problem. Have you noticed a change in spending on food since recovery? I spend a lot less on food since losing weight. I would eat a lot more takeout about three to four times a week when I was obese, which would cost about 50 pounds per week. Also, I drank a lot of alcohol while I was obese, and obviously being bigger, I drank around four times as much as I can now. I don't drink at all anymore, but I would be in the hospital if I tried to consume the same amount of alcohol as I used to. It was very costly. I now spend more money on actual food shopping, anywhere from 70 to 100 pounds every two weeks, but the food is much better quality and I only eat takeout once every few months. Did you have any go-to foods that you spent an excessive amount of money on? I would eat vastly bigger portions. I found myself buying a lot of processed bulky foods like biscuits and chocolate and eating a lot of refined carbs as a go-to. Also, for my expensive go-to food, I would go through around 500 to 700 grams of cheese per week. Now it's around 60 to 90 grams per week, and cheese is not cheap. Have you noticed a change in spending on medical care since losing weight? I suffer from gallstones, which I definitely believe was from being obese and my eating habits from when I was bigger. I would have a gallbladder attack about every two days, which I would take painkillers for. Since losing weight, I rarely get an attack, only if I have a bit of a relapse when it comes to the binge eating. Have you noticed a change in spending on exercise and other discretionary health costs? No, it's the same. I invested in a few pieces of equipment over the years and just use those and go walking. Have you noticed a change in spending in other aspects like clothing, hygiene, and travel? I spend less on most things now. I used to spend a lot of money on hair dye and cosmetics because I was very insecure and I would also spend more on clothes since I kept gaining weight and I wanted my clothes to fit. And I obviously spent more on hygiene because my body was twice the size that it is now. Did you or anyone around you ever experience financial strain due to your size or disorder? When I was larger, my partner would partake a lot in buying a lot of the junk food, alcohol, and takeout. We never got into financial trouble, and by the end of the month, we would have about 400 pounds between us. Now, I don't work, and my partner works, and we still have around $400 left over at the end of the month, which is insane to believe that we could have been spending that much on food and alcohol back then. This next person has lost 40 pounds and recovered from a binge purge disorder. Have you noticed a change in food spending since recovery? Yes. Although I was never morbidly obese, I've definitely noticed a big difference in how much I eat. The average binge would cost about $30 to $40 each, and now I don't even spend $40 per week on food. Did you have any go-to foods that you spent an excessive amount of money on? Yes, I had three. Totino's, Oreos, and ice cream. When I would have a cheat day, those were what I would eat. My mother was the biggest enabler, and we would both go out together day or night to purchase these items. Have you noticed a change in spending on medical care since recovery? Only my teeth. I used to get cavities significantly more often than I do now. The sugar combined with the acid of throwing up due to my disorder took a massive toll on my oral health. Have you noticed a change in spending on exercise and other discretionary health costs? Barely any at all compared to what I would eat. I got a yoga mat, and every week I will get some healthy food, but that's it. I've always hated exercise until I lost weight. Although I was only 167 pounds at 5'6 and 13 years old, 
I remember how much my calves would hurt when I ran. I'm able to work out now, and I hate it, but it isn't painful. Did you or anyone around you ever experience financial strain due to your size or disorder? Yes. I grew up poor and sadly had an abusive mother. A lot of the time, she would guilt trip me on the money I was spending. Even if it was something like being extremely cold to the point of always being in bed, she would only blame me and not get a job to fix it. Eating was a strain on us, but that was her addiction as well as mine. It was so bad that she would not let me spend time with her unless I was eating food. Even if I said I would pack tea or my own healthy food, she would not let me. Oftentimes, if I didn't eat a burger, she would say that I didn't love her or I didn't want to spend time with her. This put a strain on us and forced me to eat when I didn't even want to. A lot of unnecessary money was spent because of that, and oftentimes I would throw it up anyways and then feel worse about myself because she would say, you're wasting money and being ungrateful. At 13, I got a job to help with the costs, but because of school, it didn't last very long. We needed the money so badly that she almost pulled my 15-year-old brother out of school so he could get a job to help fuel her spending addiction and food addiction. I'm still thankful that everyone around her convinced her not to. In this next story, this person didn't answer questions. They just explained their experiences with their disorder and their size and their finances. Hi, I saw your most recent video about the financial costs of obesity, and I just wanted to share more insight. I'm currently trying to recover from BED, and at my heaviest, I was 220 pounds. This isn't much compared to other people, but about five months prior, I was only 150 pounds, with my lowest weight being at 130 pounds the year before. I'm 17 years old, and I had just gotten my first job with my own money. I realized that ordering food was a thing, which I wish I had never learned. And from then on, I spent hundreds of dollars on takeout, maybe even thousands. Every meal was at least $30, sometimes going up to $80 for dishes that would barely last me two days. This reckless spending impacted how I bought other things because I would justify meaningless purchases with the thought of, oh, I've spent twice as much as this on food, so this item is worth it. After work every day, I would waste my tips on a big bottle of soda, a chocolate bar, and some sort of chips or ice cream, which would be at least $10 per day, so about $100 per week on just snacks. And when I went very quickly from 150 pounds to 200 pounds, I noticed the difference. I couldn't walk home like I used to without pain. My teeth hurt more. My jeans didn't fit anymore because of how quickly I had gained the weight. I now had prominent, dark stretch marks almost everywhere. Once I realized how unhealthy this behavior was, and I decided to buy a week's worth of healthy food. So I bought a lot of fruit and vegetables, along with some super tea and almond milk. All of this added up to about $30. It is not more expensive to eat healthy food. I was very lazy and had all of my groceries delivered to my house, and even then, with all of the added delivery costs, I was spending $30 for a week's worth of food compared to $40 for one empty fatty meal. I've seen a lot of fat activists talking about how a study was conducted where a bunch of white people were asked if they would rather be black and no one said yes because they realized the oppression that black people faced. So when they asked skinny people if they would rather be fat, and they said no, they said it's because they know that fat people are a marginalized group. But the real reason people don't want to be fat is because I can't think of a single upside. When I was 150 pounds, I was chubby. I used to think that was fat. But when I look back and compare being over 200 pounds to me being 130 pounds, I was so much more active, much more confident, and felt overall better at 130 pounds. I was so much more productive I didn't waste hundreds of dollars that I could have been saving on food. My skin was better, and I was generally happier when I was smaller. It's been a huge financial waste to just eat what you want and feel satisfied. Because someone with a food addiction can eat until they get sick. We shouldn't promote the idea of eating whenever you want and however much you want, because for me, that's how I reached my lowest point. So this next person has lost over 90 pounds and they went from 282 pounds to 192 pounds as of 2022. Have you noticed a change in food spending since losing weight? My parents kinda sucked. So when I turned 15, they made me be financially independent from them, including buying my own groceries. I'd basically only buy pantry staples, then get fast food or go out for every meal. 
I don't remember how much I spent back then, but as an adult, I've actually been able to start a savings account where I can put away about $100 per week from not going out to restaurants. Did you have any go-to foods that you spent an excessive amount of money on? My go-to was Mexican food. I had a friend I'd go out to eat with three to five times per week and gorge myself on chips and potato fajitas. This is like $30 each time, so I could spend $150 on a bad week. Have you noticed a change in spending on medical care since losing weight? I'm lucky enough that I've never had any health complications in general, so no, I've never really had any noticeable change in my medical spending. Have you noticed a change in spending in other aspects like clothing, hygiene, and travel? I went from a size extra large to a medium, and from a size 38 pants to a size 32. So depending on the brand and the jeans, it sometimes costs a little less for my clothing, but nothing substantial. Did you or anyone around you ever experience financial strain due to your size or disorder? Especially when I was in my teens and had poor impulse control, I remember having basically no money all the time. I know that's weird to say, but I was financially responsible for myself from an early age. But I never had any money because of how much I ate out. I remember a time when I had like $30 and I chose to DoorDash a Crave case from White Castle instead of putting gas in my car to get to school and work, and then missing both school and work the next day. As an adult, it hasn't been that bad, but for a while, I was definitely living paycheck to paycheck because of the food spending, when I could have been saving, also I could continue eating out all the time. And eating addiction is a real thing. Oh, and I also noticed since I stopped going out and getting fast food as much, the gas in my car lasts an extra day or so now. So this next person has currently lost 147 pounds. Have you noticed a change in food spending since losing weight? I now cook nearly all of my meals, so I spend very little on takeout and never really eat at restaurants unless it's a special occasion. I'm spending more on groceries than I used to, but these purchases last longer than the takeout did. I'm definitely overall spending less money per meal, making my own food, and consuming a lot less food per day. Did you have any go-to foods that you spent an excessive amount of money on? I used to drink a bottle of soda per day and frequently binge on chips. The cost of cheap junk food adds up when it's consumed daily. I would also eat a lot of takeout or fast food, which is more expensive per meal versus what I spend on cooking at home now. Have you noticed a change in spending on exercise and other discretionary health costs? I work at a gym, so I have a free membership. Having this job wouldn't have been possible for me prior to my weight loss due to all of the health issues that kept me out of work. Have you noticed a change in spending in other aspects like clothing, hygiene, and travel? I spend less money buying clothes as I've gone down in sizes. I've been shopping a lot more at thrift stores, which has been a lot easier being smaller, even though I'm still plus-sized. Did you or anyone around you ever experience financial strain due to your size or disorder? The biggest financial strain on my life was being unemployed due to my health issues. Along with being severely morbidly obese, I was experiencing severe depression, insomnia, sleep apnea, anxiety, high blood pressure, and constant aches and pains. At my heaviest, which was 396 pounds, I couldn't stand on my feet for very long or go for walks. I was practically bedridden with pain and depression in my late 20s. Since losing over 140 pounds, I can stand and walk for as long as I want. My sleep apnea and high blood pressure have gone away without needing medicine or additional treatment. My mental health has greatly improved. I've been back at work for over eight months now, which wasn't possible being obese and chronically ill. I've also been more conscious of my spending habits and saving now that I'm in a better place. It's hard to care much about your finances when you're so depressed and unable to work. It's easier to make longer term goals and plans without all of those additional health concerns and burdens. Have you noticed a change in food spending since losing weight? I have noticed a change in my spending habits since losing weight. I used to be unable to grocery shop correctly because I completely lacked the ability to plan ahead. So instead of a normal grocery shopping experience where you buy for the whole week, my husband and I would just buy food to eat for that day. This definitely led to spending way more than intended on food. We used to eat at fast food places or sit down restaurants around two to three times per week. Now we don't go out unless it's one of our birthdays or our anniversary. Partially due to COVID, 
but also partially because it gives us major anxiety to let anyone that isn't myself or my husband prepare our food. We also now spend way, way less money on groceries because I mainly only consume veggies, fruits, smoothies and juices, and certain protein drinks and meal replacement shakes. We used to spend around $200 per week on food. Now we spend far less because we grow a lot of our own food or buy it from neighbors at the farmer's market. So we probably spend around $50 to $100 a week on food now. Did you have any go-to foods that you spent an excessive amount of money on? I used to spend an ungodly amount of money at Chipotle. Especially when I was furloughed at the beginning of COVID, I would always order a burrito bowl with double protein, all the sauces, guac and queso at least three or four times per week. I would also buy two or three Starbucks drinks per week as well. Always two venti flat whites and sometimes a holiday drink. When I was younger, around 22 to 26, I'm 28 now, I would drink an average of two to four energy drinks per day. I also had a drinking problem at the time, which made me consume a ridiculous amount of empty calories without realizing it. Have you noticed a change in spending on medical care since losing weight? I have noticed a massive change in medical care expenses. I will preface this with the disclaimer that I have health illness anxiety, which actually made me avoid the doctor as much as possible, but I was still at the doctor all the time. I would get chronic sinus infections and skin infections that made it painful to move and walk. I was constantly at urgent care and the dermatologist and was always told to lose weight. Thankfully, I always had good insurance, so there was never a huge cost at one time but I'm sure I was still spending a few hundred dollars every few months in copays. After losing weight, I go to the doctor for physicals, but I haven't been sick at all. My skin issues have almost entirely cleared up with minimal medical intervention. Now, my main healthcare expenses are for mental health reasons. Have you noticed a change in spending in exercise and other discretionary health costs? I cannot recall a time in my life where I spent money on health or exercise equipment prior to losing weight. Now, I still don't spend very much money on exercise expenses. I don't go to a gym because I am intensely self-conscious. My husband bought me a treadmill that I use almost daily, which cost around $500. Otherwise, I exercise by walking my husky. Have you noticed a change in spending in other aspects like clothing, hygiene, and travel? My spending habits have drastically changed since losing weight. I used to only be able to shop at Torrid. I even worked there for a period of time and would constantly be buying things from them. I believe I would spend around $150 to $175 each month on clothes. Since losing weight, I exclusively shop at thrift stores. I was always sad I couldn't find good stuff in my size when I was fat, so now that I'm smaller, I've replaced my entire wardrobe with thrifted clothes. I've also been spending way less money on makeup. I used to excessively spend on makeup and would always practice with it because I thought if my makeup was good, it would distract from the fact that I was fat. Did you or anyone around you ever experience financial strain due to your size or disorder? Thankfully, the people around me didn't suffer financially due to my bad habits. I was never able to rely on anyone in my past, so I never asked my husband or anyone else to buy me anything. But my husband would always get food for me regardless of whether I asked, because it's part of his culture. Additionally, Myself and my husband work in law and have well-paying jobs, as well as a joint bank account, so I never had to worry much about the money I was spending. However, I did use my high-paying job as an excuse to continue with all of my bad habits. For some background information, when I was in college between 2012 and 2016, I was completely broke, even though I was working two jobs, because all the money went to paying for my tuition, bills and gas, etc. I never had money left for food, and the meal plan I had was bare bones. This situation led me to binge eating when I would go home to my parents on the weekend, because I never knew when the next time I would eat would be. Other times, I would be so hungry that I would steal food from community fridges, or from people coming out of the cafeteria, or friends, roommates, whoever, because I was so hungry. I would also use a food shelf about once per week, but it had very limited hours, and I wouldn't always make it there on time because of school. Some of these bad behaviors lasted well into late adulthood and are only now being corrected. When I began to lose weight, it was due to being under extreme, constant stress at work. I lost around 60 to 70 pounds just from the stress alone between June and November of 2021. After quitting that job, I had a sort of mental breakdown after finding out a friend of mine passed away six years ago when he was only 27. 
He died of a heart attack from an undiagnosed heart condition without any warning, and I was terrified that I could die just as fast if I didn't get healthy as soon as possible. During this time, I was diagnosed with a mood disorder and a cluster B personality disorder, both of which were severely impacting my impulse control. This explained my various addictions over the years, including my food addiction. Proper medication, self-control, and the realization that running and boxing helped me cope with my disorder in a healthy way, which in turn led me to losing over 100 pounds. So those are all the stories I have for today. I hope you found them interesting. If you want to share your story and you've recovered from binge eating or you've lost over 70 pounds, you can reach out to me and share your story. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next video.